All right, we are back. Uh, in the first episode, we installed Drupal 8. In the second one, we explored the user interface and especially the admin interface of Drupal 8. And I highly encourage you to look more into that, how Drupal 8 UI has changed. But if you have done Drupal 7, Drupal 8 should not be too different. And in any case, the purpose of this series, the focus of this series is more about uh, programming and developing modules and themes for Drupal 8 rather than just e site building and uh, using Drupal 8. Okay, so content management is, is not the focus. So, finally in this third episode we are going to start writing some code and create some custom modules. So first thing you need to realize about that is that you can put your modules either in um, slash modules under Drupal root or sites default modules hopefully modules custom so that's where we are going to put our modules and it, my sites default modules custom is an empty directory I'm going to create a new module for that I create a directory called foo so now I have foo I cd into foo so foo is going to be the name of my module uh, a <coughs> module in Drupal needs at a minimum Drupal 8 needs uh, an info file at least so let's create an info file we'll call it foo.info.yml okay so this file will contain uh, some basic information okay so let's see what it should have this is very similar to Drupal A7 you have but the difference is the info files in Drupal 7 were a special format, uh, info format, while in Drupal 8 they are YAML file, yet another markup language. So, but the properties are very similar. So you say name, instead of saying name equal to foo module, this is what you would say in an original info file, you simply say a col put a colon there. So name colon foo module, type, there is a new attribute called type. You do have to give a type because type could be theme or module. So here we will say type is module. Then you have to, just like Drupal 7, you have to specify the core version and that will be 8.x. And then you can give a description and this could be my own little full module. Okay. And then you can specify a package this is optional uh, but it would be useful I'll call put it in the package custom packages are used only for grouping so once we do these things let's save this and when I have saved it I can now go to extend and I don't know maybe I will see the foo module that's right I see the foo module this is the name of the module, foo module, and here's the description. And that's all I see. There isn't much else. And if, if I enable this module, it won't really do anything. So before I enable it, let's put some fu some functionality in the module. Okay. And the functionality we'll put is we will create a route. What we used to do in hook menu on Drupal 7, it's done slightly differently now. <coughs> so in order to add some code, let me first create in in your module you need an src directory okay so make directory src and in that src directory you need to put uh, a subdirectory one second uh, called well it depends on your package path but uh, let's create another subdirectory called controller Because we are going to create a, a controller, as in, a, you know, MVC style controller, model view controller type of controller. So let's create a directory src slash controller. And now in here, we have to put a class. Now remember, Drupal 8 uses object oriented PHP for the most part. So we edit src controller foo controller.
So I'm calling it foocontrollers.php because in from Drupal viewpoint, each function, each method of this class is going to be a controller. So the class serves as a as a group of controllers. So let's go in there. And uh, once you do that, you have um, you will have. Let's see what what we use. You, this is a PHP file, so you first put the PHP tag. You do not put a closing PHP tag, as you know from Drupal 7, uh, because this file contains nothing other than code. It contains no markup. So don't close it. Close the tag. First thing you, you do is you give it a namespace. The namespace is going to be a child of Drupal. So you Drupal is the root namespace. Child of that is your module name, the machine name of your module. And then under that, the controller, which is also the name of this directory. So keep in mind that while <coughs> the directory path is src controller foo control, I mean src slash controller, controller, the package path is Drupal, machine name of the module, and controller. Okay. Then let's start creating a class. We will call it class foo controllers. Remember, that's the name of the file as well. And it extends controller base. Now, where is controller base? Well, we need to import it. To import it, we use the statement use. And then go to Drupal. Core controller controller base. So this is this is the uh, so the controller base comes from Drupal core controller. That's the package, and from the for that namespace, and the name of the class is controller base. Okay, so that's what we are extending. And once we extend, we our, we get a lot of inherited functionality. <laughs> but before we get into any of the inherited functionality, let's just create a single method. This single method is going to serve as the um, controller function. Remember, I said that foo controllers is not a single controller; it's a grouping of controllers. So the class, each of the methods of the class, is a controller method. So let's call it uh, page one. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a simple route slash foo slash page one. And the page one is going to say, you know, this is page one or something like that. So you just say, so this method is called page one. And the method needs to con return. Now you could just simply return a string, some string like this. But I don't think that would be right. The better thing is to return a render array. So the render array, you could say array and then pound sign markup, just like in Drupal 7 we used to do. Markup and then you could give some markup value. Okay, so this is one way. But in Drupal 8 and with the new version of PHP, the convention is to use simple square brackets without the array constructor. And in here you could say this is page one. So uh, what I just did is not perfect, but it's a start. Let's see if this will work. So what we uh, well, let's recap. We have a controller class called foo controllers. It extends controller base. It has one method called page one, which returns a render array containing markup. This is page one. Okay. Now at this point, we won't be able to actually use this page. In order to use it, we we need another file. Right next to foo.info.yaml, we need another file called foo.routing.yaml. Okay. So let's create foo.routing.yaml. Okay. This file, it will contain some information uh, regarding uh, the routes. So first we give a machine name to the route 
and it will be foo.page1. That's a, the machine name of the route. This machine name is used uh, f for s uh, various other purposes, such as redirecting or uh, adding menu link. So that's the machine name, and then give it a path. The path is going to be slash foo slash page one. Well, that's just a mm, path that we made up. It kind of makes sense. It's in the module foo, and it's uh, for page one. So that kind of makes sense. Then we have to give it some defaults. Def defaults. By the way, you might notice that in YAML files, uh, adding two spaces or any am amount of indentation makes uh, uh, an attribute a child of the parent attribute. So this is how we uh, implement hierarchy. So in defaults, we will have further, we will have children. The children, this is, it starts with an underscore. Um, and this will be controller. The method, and this will be fully qualified name of the method. It's put in quotes, okay? So Drupal, then the foo controller, foo controller, double colon, page one. So this is the name of the method with complete qualification, like uh, the entire package path, class name, double colon, and then the method name. So this gives tells Drupal what method to execute when somebody visits this path. Then the title. Now title is something that you that will show up at the top of the page. So Drupal needs a title. Okay. Then there is another key called requirements. So under requirements, you can put permissions. So say permission. Again, this one starts with an underscore. So I think most of the Drupal's built-in uh, keywords, they start with an underscore, it seems. Um, and the permission is to access content. So basically what we are saying is that anybody who can access content on this site should be able to see this page. All right, let's do uh, go over this again. This is the machine name of the route. This is the actual path of the route. This under defaults underscore controller, you have the fully qualified name of the method. The title is the you know plain text string that will show up as the title. And under requirements underscore permission, you specify the name of the permission that is needed to view this page. And you can see that in the what permissions are there by going to uh, people under people you can see the permissions and the, one of the permissions will be content so as you can see view content should be one of the view published content so i think this is this is the uh, this is probably the permission okay any case i just happen to know that the machine name of that permission is access space content okay all right let's save this and at this point we are re ready to enable our module but before we do that let's just uh, show you what we have So what we have, let's see, is we have foo.info.yaml, foo.routing.yaml, src directory containing controller directory containing the foo controllers PHP. So these three things together make up our module. Let's enable the module, go to extend, search for the module, and that's the module. Let's check the checkbox and hit install. All right, no errors, that's good. That means we can try to visit foo slash page one. And it says page not found. <coughs> Let's see why. Maybe we need to clear cache, maybe. Let's find out if we can just clear cache rush CR. Cache rebuild is the new command. You cannot do clear. Oh, so it looks like there is an error. 
that is probably is the reason why it didn't work so yeah I see an error it says reflection exception with message class foo controller does not exist so Drupal foo controller foo controller oh controllers that's the problem I misspelled my class name the class name is not foo controller it is foo controllers plural that was an error that's good so we can now once again do drush cr and hopefully that will fix the problem and it did there you see the title page one and this is page one excellent so at this point we have created a very basic programmatically generated page so to prove that it actually works we can look at the src controller foo controller again and change this to this is page one and then some let's see if i save that and if i refresh my page i get this is page one and then some. so so the the body of the page is being programmatically generated but there is a problem here uh, this is not the most uh, this is not the best way to write this code because uh, we, we we did not do anything uh, to make this code tr uh, translatable this text needs to be translatable so in Drupal 7 we used to say wrap this string in uh, T function like this right in Drupal 8 you do something similar but not exactly same basically your controller which is represented by dollar this has now has a method called dollar this t so so this t function is coming from controller base controller base we are inheriting a method called t and that is what we use for translation so if i save this i don't think anything will change because uh, we haven't had any translation we haven't done any translation but this is the right way to, to do translation before we close this video let's do one more thing which is I want to show you how to um, create a second page with which accepts some parameters so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this page one and paste it like duplicate it and this time I will call it page two right and the page two will have two parameters let's say the parameters are param1 and param2 this is me just showing you how to include some parameters so if you now include that this is call it uh, this is page 2 with params percent param1 and percent param2 so this way we will display these two parameters to display them I have to provide another array as an argument and the array has percent param1 as a key and the value is dollar param1 then percent param2 as the value another key and dollar param2 as in as the value so what is happening is we have a new method called page2 it takes two parameters and then it uses those two parameters to uh, present the page body but how do you inject these two parameters well the answer lies in in the routing file so if you go to, go to the routing file first of all you have to do, you have to create uh, page 2 route so you copy the whole first route page 1 route and then you give it another machine name we call it page 2 the path is page 2 but we will put two paths in there param1 two path parameters param1 and param2 so what we are doing is we are saying the path to my page is not just page 2 it is page 2 slash something slash something and these two parameters will get bound will get passed into our page 2 method so now we are saying my controller is not foo controllers page one it is foo controllers page two and then we can specify uh, default values also mm, 
so we, if we specify default values, let's see, in the default we say param1 is p1 and param2 is p2. So this makes, uh, gives a default value in case you don't specify param1 and param2. So let's save this. So we have two pages. Let's uh, rebuild cache, cache rebuild, see address see oops, another error. So what's the error now? Page one, what is the error? Indentation problem near param p1, param colon p1. Okay, let's see what's the why. Um, Oh, so I did not indent it correctly, so it's con complaining about that. Okay, so two spaces, I guess it, it needs. It, it needs uh, this to be consistent. So we had four spaces, we have to keep using four spaces. Let's do the rush CR again. Okay, cache rebuild complete. At this point, we can go back here. Page one obviously continues to work the way it used to work. Same as before, but page two now. If we visit page two, uh, ah, title is still, <laughs> so I made a mistake. I forgot to change the title. So let's change that. Let's change the title to page two. Okay. And uh, I suppose if I just reload, it doesn't pick up the new title. So I have to uh, rush CR. So when you say rush CR and reload, you get a title, hopefully. Yeah, the title is page two. This is page two with perhaps P1 and P2. The problem is P1 and P2 are defaults, which is kind of nice that when you specify these default values, the path parameters become optional because we have default values for them. Now you can actually give them real values. So you could say param one is uh, foo one. And when I specify param one as foo one, it shows up as foo one, but page two, the param two p two, remains p two because that's the default value. But I could give foo two as the value of p two param two, and uh, there you see, foo two. Okay, I think that's a lot to digest. I encourage you to pause and rewind this video and actually follow each of the steps. So let's go back. Uh, a quick recap: we have our new uh, module called foo it has an info file a routing file and a controllers class and in the info file you have seen it was pretty straightforward info file is very simple name type is a new thing type has to be included core description package and then the routing is you specify the route name the path and the defaults contains controller underscore controller underscore title and underscore permissions is under requirements and then you specify in the path you can specify placeholders by giving curly braces and uh, whatever the name of these placeholders doesn't matter that much other than that it has to match this one but in the actual function which is page two you can um, you can specify any very um, argument name. If you now go to the the controllers, uh, these dollar param one and dollar param two could be anything. You could name them anything you want. It's by position, and uh, that gives you two controller functions. Each of them generates returns a a render array. In this case, we simply return markup. That gives you programmatically generated uh, pages in Drupal 8. That was your first module. So I hope you learned. Um, obviously, certain things are different. Uh, you would do the same thing using hook menu in Drupal 7. But here in Drupal 8, you use routing YAML and a controller class. All right. We will talk to you very soon in the next episode.